Hello, and welcome to Knit, Sip, Happy. My name is Nancy, and I'm coming to you from the east coast of Canada, just outside of Moncton, New Brunswick. This is the third time I've recorded this. I feel really out of practice today, and I'm not quite sure why. So I'm going to try and streamline things and not waffle, and maybe I'll get through this and my vibe rhythm will come back. <laughs> you can find me everywhere as Knit, Sip, Happy. I will have all of the links below to my project pages and anything I talk about uh, just in the description box down below. Um, it is middle of June here. It's been pretty cloudy and wet and gloomy, which is why I might be a little foggy. I'm really missing seeing some sunshine. We've had very cold temperatures and quite wet. Um, yeah, so not my happy June place. But we haven't had to have the air conditioning going yet, so I guess if there's a plus, that would be it. All right, I'm already waffling. I am channeling a little bit of sunshine and summer today with this lovely German Gewürztraminer. It's um, an off dry white wine that we love. It's just an easy sipping, drinking wine. It's not too sweet, but not too dry. So floral, tropical fruit, quite lovely. So that is what I'm drinking today. Um, what else should I talk to you about? So today we're going to do the normal, what I'm wearing. Spoiler alert, it's also an FO. Um, whips, I'm going to have a little bit of design chat later. I've got two giveaway winners. I've already drawn for those. I managed to think ahead of that. Um, just some knit-alongs that I'm kind of participating in and, and uh, enjoying being a part of. Uh, acquisitions after Knit City Montreal. I think that's pretty cheeky. Um, but I do, in fact, have some acquisitions. I have a new hand spun project on my little wheel. It's back here behind me. Um, and a little chit chat at the end. So this, what did I say? It's the 19th today? I think it's the 19th of June today. I recorded my first episode last year on June 25th. So I'm almost at my one year podiversary. So this fundamentally is my one year podiversary and it's been an amazing year making more nitty friends um, online. All the designs that I've, sock designs that I've done. Um, yeah, it's just uh, 2022 into this part of 2023 has just been amazing in my knitting life and I thank you for being here on my journey. So what I'm wearing, I am wearing my salty tea, salty air tea that I was hoping to finish um, when I was talking to you last time I had the realization I was a week out until the event that I wanted to wear it at. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of video that I pre-recorded just to show you a little bit better so I don't have to get up and move the camera and all of that. So I bought this silly black dress um, online and didn't return it in time. It fits okay, but the top has these little thin straps and they're very stretchy and it doesn't stay where I want it. And the cups don't hold my boobs and my bra's all over the place and it just wasn't wearable for me. So um, my thought was when I picked up this yarn, this tin Lena, There we go, from Sadness Garn. Beautiful smoky purple colorway. Um, I'll have the actual colorway number linked to my project page. I have three, I lost one. I have three balls left, I bought six. So I made this little tea out of three uh, 50 gram balls. So I'm gonna insert the video and I'll just talk a little bit. Um, so I cropped it to six inches after sleeve separation. So it is very short. Um, it is only to wear with this dress, maybe a tunic top or a tank top with some jeans. I haven't worn it that way yet. Primarily it was to make this silly dress wearable. Um, so I did the sleeves a little bit longer. I added extra stitches around the sleeves as well to accommodate my upper arm. Um, if you remember last couple episodes, I'd said I had cast on the size four and then increased out to the size five and then adjusted my sleeve count to give me the space that I needed for my upper arm circumference. So thoughts on this. I've worn this twice now, two full, you know, kind of three or four hour 
stints. I haven't worn it for eight hours or anything yet. Um, when I divided for the sleeves, I did my usual move stitches from the back to the front to make more room for my chest to hopefully have it sit a little better. I still find that this neckline is very wide and it's going a little lower in the back than I would like. Um, part of me thinks that I will pick up stitches along here, cut off this rib band and re-knit a rib a little taller and do a super tight bind off to pull it in. I don't know in reality if that's something I'm actually going to do. I'm looking at myself in the screen, not in the camera. Nothing's changed in almost a year. I still do it. I do it slightly less, I think, but the reward is still the wine to refocus me. So, as I said, I don't know if I actually will do that fix. I don't know if it's annoying enough to do that. We'll see with a couple more wears if I feel that way. Um, I, I said I have three balls of that yarn left. I can definitely see knitting another one of these um, and maybe in a regular fingering weight with three quarter or longer sleeves for more of a, a fall winter wear for me. But I would definitely do a much smaller neck or I do a provisional cast on and pick up and then adjust my neck to the wear. Um, Cause it does, I said, it does feel a little open and wide for me and I can feel it moving around. And again, it's super cropped. So is it moving around because it's so short and there's no weight? This yarn is very light. I've only done this in 150 grams. So it could be my modifications that have caused the issue. Not sure. I was watching um, for the fun of knit earlier and um, her neckline was also very, very wide. Um, so I don't know if it's if it's a function of the sweater with with the summer summer gar summer yarns plant based yarns, I think the um, original sample by Samantha Guerin um, might be in a full wool based yarn, but this is a cotton linen viscose blend. I think I've put the yarn down below. Um, I have three balls of it left, so I'm tempted. I think I might hold it double and knit a little sleeveless tank. Um, or cami or something for my daughter. Uh, I think that'd be something that she would wear. So that is the salty air. Um, I think that's all I have for modifications, things to tell you. If you do have any questions, I do have some more specifics and numbers in my Ravelry page. So that's one, that's what I'm wearing. And my first whip, my first F.O. My second F.O. is my Mind the Gap socks. So there are two. They are sisters, not twins, but I did use the turquoise heel and toe for both. So this was the first one that I had done. I don't I was, we, these were afterthought socks that I cast on. I don't very often do vanilla socks because they linger on my needles. I cast these on in January and I just, just finished them. And I had to push myself to finish them, to be honest, because the stripes are really engaging and everything, but as I said, vanilla usually is not my jam. So I'd originally picked out black to use for the heel and the toe and then, oh, look, that's where my heel is going to be and that's where my toe is going to be. Oops. So I picked the turquoise instead. I fast forward to the second sock and the turquoise um, stripe hit on the heel, but I almost changed colors but I decided to just go with it. Um, so this is an afterthought heel. I've got a short row gusset in here. I'm not sure if you can see, there's kind of a little triangle wedge. I'm still messing around with numbers on this. I've had some people ask me about it um, because afterthought heels just aren't deep enough for my high instep wide foot. So I've inserted this triangle right here using short rows then done my after some plain rounds and then done the decreases for my afterthought heel. And that does give me quite a bit more room across this part of my sock. So like I said, I've had some people ask me about that. I'm still playing around with it and wearing them and gifting them to people and having them wear them. Um, I'm not sure if this is a common thing. I haven't really seen 
this before, but I could be wrong. Um, I think somebody had told me that it's out there. But right now I'm just playing. If I ever, I may just write it up and, and put it for free somewhere. Um, what I'm what I'm doing. But I do like an afterthought or a short row heel to not break up the striping um, in the sock. Short row heels, again, I run into the same issue. I have to do something to get more depth across that instep, you know, that hinge, that ankle across the front of the instep hinge. Anyway, these are from, I always forget, Dreaming Clouds, Trailing Clouds. It's the Mind the Gap sock set. This was a deep stash that I'd gotten from a D stash from somebody else. Um, it was a second skein. There was actually a break in somewhere in the around the red, um, but there was no interruption in the striping at all. I just um, I just snipped the, the the knot out and carried on knitting. I wound and wove in the ends, and there's no discernible. It was somewhere. It was either in this green red or this green red. I can't remember. But really happy to have those done, and I still have. Oh, there we are. I remember to put the tag in there this time. Trailing clouds, mind the gap. It's blue faced Lester. Sock yarn. So um, there's still quite a bit. I didn't actually weigh this, but I'm going to. The, my daughter will get a pair of these as well. Um, we've both we both love to travel in uh, in London, and. Uh, so this will be enough for her for a pair of socks, shorties, maybe, probably. So that's finished object number one. Where am I going to put all these? I've got so many things to show you today. Um, I guess they're just going to go on the floor and I'll deal with the consequences afterwards. So the only other two finished objects that I have are um, part of a new sock design. I'm going to show you here just briefly in finished objects and then I'll move the rest of the chat into design chat and then if you're not interested you can fast forward through that. Oh I tried something different on the last video. Did anybody use the chapters? Um, I put chapters in across the bottom of the video um, that if people don't want to watch a specific segment they can kind of hop around. So I'm curious, did anybody use that or even notice it was there? Is it worthwhile me doing it? It's a bit of a faff, but it's not terrible. So if it's a value, I would definitely keep doing it. I'll do it for this video and you can let me know if you find that useful or not. Okay, I gave you a sneak peek of these socks last time. They are the Swiss Dot Shorties, and funnily enough, I have not knit one, not two, but I have knit three, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So this is a new pattern that's coming out June 21st for the first day of summer. These are the Swiss Dot Shorties, and I'm just going to give you a little close-up of these fun little dots that are on the around the short little leg and then down the front of the foot. So this was using a sock set from Botanical Yarns. I met the lovely Sophie in Montreal. Do I have the tag? Yes, I do. I'm going to blow the camera out there for a second. Botanical Yarn. This was a spring colorway. 7525 in the Sakura Cordia sock set, which I believe is cher a cherry blossom or a, a blossom on a tree of some sort. So it felt super summery to me. So that's the yarn that I've used. And um, why three? Stay tuned. I'll tell you in the design <laughs> chat. So um, this is one finished object and then I we found it really addicting um, after I had been here with you last I was just getting ready to send the pattern to the testers they've all smashed it and um, pretty much finished I think they're all finished just getting me back their numbers and pictures um, but everybody's already planning second pairs because it, used, because it uses so little yarn um, but I thought it'd be fun to try it in self-striping 
So I looked in my stash for um, wider, equidistant, striped yarn. So this is Knit Picks Felici. So the yarn is Mint Chip from Felici. And I had some stroll fingering in the Tranquil colorway, also in my stash, which I used just for the heel. And I have enough left in this bag to knit another pair of exactly the same if I want, or something else later. So I just use the Tranquil for the heel uh, flap and gusset. And then I had to do a little bit of adjusting um, here in, in the body of the sock, the foot of the sock, because I wasn't doing the wraps on the bottom and the wraps use quite a bit, these dot stitches use quite a bit of yarn. So I had to kind of mess around with it a little bit, but it's really easy to do. And how fun is that? So I used a 25 gram ball with I think three grams from the second one just to get this last uh, to get this last little bit for the toe um, and just use the contrast for the heel flap. So I have knit, <laughs> I have finished five socks. It's a weird number um, since I saw you last and we'll talk more about these. I'm not gonna put these far. We'll talk about these in design chat. So that is it for finished objects. Looking at the screen, not the camera, must be time for a little sip and reset. Okay, whips. I've had some new cast-ons and I've got some continuing whips. Let me just clear some stuff off my little table here. So let's start, no, let's start with this one. So last time I had showed you a whole pile of these little nano socks that I'm using. I'm using leftovers from my sock designs and I'm making up these little nano socks. So the pattern will be linked below. It's a little Christmas ornament and I have modified this to make it a little wider. The actual pattern is quite narrow and I found it really difficult. I found it a little more difficult to work with. So I have modified this. I finished one of these. Not a great, a great accomplishment, but I've got one more. So, and the good news is I found my wintry woods scraps. I had mentioned that I couldn't find these after my cleanup for my mother-in-law being here in May. I couldn't find my wintry woods scraps. So right now I have three left to do. I have Blooming from Ginger Snap. I have Old Rose from my Hexy Diamond socks and I have Sweet Skein of Mind from Wintry Woods and I guess I also now have Sakura Cordia from my Swiss Dot Shorties. Did I tell you the name of those socks? The new ones? Swiss Dot Shorties because they look like Swiss Dot fabric. I loved Swiss Dot fabric. As a child of the 70s and 80s, 70s specifically, Swiss Dot was pretty big. <laughs> I had a summer dress and yeah, anyway. So one little kind of finished object, but it's still part of the bigger whip that I'm going to make some kind of garland or something to hang all of these off of as a little memory of my sock designs. So that is that. Let's have something new. It's also being housed in a new bag. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? It's got this gray waxed canvas on the bottom and this gorgeous floral zipper bag. Um, we had a knitting meetup in Sussex. 16 of us were there. It was awesome. It was three weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. Um, it ended up raining, so we had to move our meetup to a local restaurant in Sussex, New Brunswick. We had quite a few uh, new uh, people who never attended one of our get-togethers before, which was fabulous. 
and um, Donna, who is a local knitter and uh, a knitting friend, makes these amazing bags. She doesn't have a website. Um, she just kind of sells locally at shows and to friends of us when we meet up. She's a quilter, so the, the quality of this is outstanding. But I had to put um, my Knitting for Olive. Come on. There we go. Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. The fuchsia colorway. It's not quite that bright. It's a little more somewhere in there. Um, I was looking through my library of patterns of t-shirts, fingering weight kind of summer, summery t-shirts I could use with this linen. And I came up with Cloudsley by Isabel Kramer. Um, I love Isabel Kramer's designs. I find that they fit me quite well. The design details are, are really well thought out and they fit really well. Um, patterns are clear. Yeah, I love an Isabel Kramer pattern. If you're fairly new to garment knitting, um, she's a good one to start with because the details are great and the fit is really good as well. So I have made some headway on this, seeing as you've never seen it before. So I'm doing it as a t-shirt version. So it's a v-neck, it's not this bright. It's really, yeah, no, the, the camera is blowing it very much, blowing it out quite a bit. Um, so I have cast on Cloudsley and split for the sleeves. So beautiful v-neck, but the impact on this garment is this gorgeous, slip stitch kind of cable-y pattern down the back. And I said that color is showing way brighter than it should be, but this runs all the way down the back of this t-shirt and I think it's gorgeous. So um, this has a modified set in sleeve or a contiguous sleeve construction. So I'm just going to put you back to the front here. So this seam runs all the way down to when we start the shoulder shaping. And it's this fun, comes to a really fun shape. There's no short rows. It's just done with increases as we're working our way down. So I have cast on, as usual, a size smaller um, than I generally need um, just to get me a little less um, a little better fit around the shoulders and a little less negative ease um, around the chest area. I have done more sleeve increases to give me a little more space for my upper arm and I'm down about three and a half inches or so past sleeve separation. So I'm going to have to try this on and see where I'm at, but I'm soon probably getting ready to start my hip increases. So there is a fake, let me just get that out of the way. There's just a pearl stitch faux side seam down there. So my stitch marker is already in place. So when I'm ready, I will start doing make one left, make one right increases on either side of this stitch marker to give me that A-line shaping. I'll do them about every inch or so. Um, to bring me out to the size that I want for my pear shape. So I'm on, this is where I'm at on the third ball. I still have two full balls left. So the plan from here is when I finish this one, I'm going to put the neckline, the neckband on, whatever it is. I think it's a pretty simple pick up, knit one round, cast off, I think. Again, didn't really read ahead. Um, so I will do the neckband. I will finish the sleeves. I'll probably do a quick steam block at that point, And then I'll have a try on and see where I'm at and um, adjust the body as needed. And I'll know how much yarn I have left at that point for the body because I will lengthen out the sleeves as I usually do. But yes, Cloudsley, Isabel Kramer thrilled by this. My husband is like, who is that going to fit? I'm like, well, me, because here's my shoulder. So I'm there. It's just, it needs blocking and it's on a small needle. Slightly insulted. <laughs> it's going to fit me. Thank you very much. But it does look quite small on the needles to be, to be fair. 
So I'm knitting that on my High Haya Sharps set and I was worried, I was trying to figure out the best needle set to use for this um, that wouldn't split the yarn, but I've already put my Chow Gu on something else that I'll show you. And my um, zings are a little blunt, I thought. So they're working out okay. I'm not, I'm splitting a stitch every now and again, but I catch it, I can feel it when I split it. With I've never worked with this um, silk before. It's a different kind of silk. It's not a shiny silk. It's a flat, matte kind of silk. It's called Barrette Silk. Um, B-O-U-R-R-R-E-T-T-E. -R -R -E -T -T -E. I'll put it on the screen. Um, I've seen it in another yarn composition recently on another podcast. I can't remember what the, what the yarn company was. But um, I said this is my first time using knitting for olive. And I really liked the swatch when I blocked it. Where are you? So it, it puffed up quite nicely and it's kind of filling in a little more of the gaps. It's not quite as see-through as the garment is, which is great. Um, and it softened up nicely and it's got some nice drape. I didn't, it's not the biggest swatch, I know, but it's, it, it was enough to give me what I needed. So do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Typical. Um, yeah. So that is in the works. I, I kind of recklessly thought um, that it would be an entry for the hashtag Cozy LV Mal that is being run by Sophie of Cozy Meadow Knits and Menon from La Violette Yarn Gift & Co. Um, that finishes Wednesday, June 21st, which is the first day of summer. So I have two summer garments on the needles. If I'd focused on one of them, I might have gotten one more finished, but I did not. So um, I got really uh, into my second garment that is on the needles. This is a great bag I picked up at the KW Fiber Fair back in 2018, I do believe. And it's by My Needle Crafts in Ontario. I loved these felted, felted sheep. So um, this is a, another test knit for Anina from Annie UT Knits on um, Instagram and YouTube. I showed you her tanker tee on the last episode. I'll put my picture here and I'll put her picture here. I had pulled this... Um, mint green yarn, we were talking about it last time, that I had washed a skein to see if it would soften and make it easier to knit. I had pulled that for the Tank RT round two. So this is a 50% linen, 20% co cotton, 20% bamboo. It was a mill end that I picked up from Small Bird Workshop a few years ago. So another knit along I'll be entering this in because it's not expiring is um, Selma from Little Big Knits, her stashy scrappy Mal. I'll put the hashtag here. And also uh, Miga from Skeins of Dreams. She's got a tease of dreams. I'll put the hashtag up. So if you're into um, knit alongs, then there's lots of fun ones to uh, be taking part of right now. So this was going to be a tank RT. I was gonna hold it double. And I swatched, I remember last time I was telling you I was really concerned about how awful this was going to be to knit, holding it double. It actually, okay, where's my swatch? Oh, there it is. It's actually not as terrible as I thought it was gonna be. Um, I've changed my needle, obviously, from whatever I was using last year when I tried swatching. So this is um, this lace weight linen in this, it's minty green. It's coming, coming off a little more sagey on the screen. Um, it's been washed and I put it in the dryer to block it and I'm pretty happy with the results. I got Gage and then Anina sent some messages through our chat group for the Tank RT saying that she had a new design similar in shape to the tankar called Lotus Lake. I'll put a picture of Anina in hers here with that beautiful lace on the bottom. 
So I quickly um, did gauge, measured my gauge and realized I could get it for that Lotus Lake with this as well. So I decided to take part in that T, that test knit with this linen. And I have cast on and been trucking along quite quickly with this. So it's the same drop shoulder construction with this shaping underneath the arm, which makes it much, like I said, I generally don't like drop shoulder, but this one was uh, really great for uh, shaping. I loved the fit of it. Um, I think I'd mentioned with the tank RT, I'd blocked it. I'd done it a little too big um, and the armholes are a little bigger than I would like. So I still will be knitting another, another tank RT, but I did make this um, two directions for the, the sleeve. I didn't add any. So I am testing the size five and it's just um, a sea of stockinette, which is going to be problematic, I think. <laughs> so I'm holding two of these double and I thought, well, I'll just, I'll f the way my yardage and my, m the yardage requirements for the pattern and gauge and all of that, I should be quite bang on for the amount of yardage. So I thought I'm just going to, once I get these decreases done underneath the arms, I'm just going to knit in the round, knit, 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 knit until I run out of the first two balls that I'm holding together. Um, they're kind of all in a mess down here because I'm pretty much at the end of it. Uh, I've really overshot the measurement. It's supposed to be eight inches. Uh, I can't remember how many inches and then you got to leave five inches for the lace. I've overshot that by quite a bit. So I need to um, put this on a second cable or a try on cord or something and try it on because I think it's way too long. I came to that, I took it, we went out to dinner on Sunday night and um, I took it there and I was just knitting around and around and around and around and around and around and around, and around, and around while we were chatting, thinking, man, I gotta come to the end of this ball, these balls soon. And I've still, I probably got a few grams left of each one and I'm still not at the end of it. I pulled it out of the bag to look at it the next morning and went, ooh. That's a lot of stockinette. So I may be ripping out a few inches. I have to, I said, I have to try it on and see where I'm at. So this one kind of went on hold because I didn't have the brain space to deal with it this week with everything happening at work. But yes. Okay, the sun has come out and it's warming up in my little room quite dramatically. I'm just going to pause you and crack the window to get some air in here because I'm starting to melt a little bit. Please hold. Okay, I am back. I have opened my door. I have opened a window. <sighs> Had a big glass of cold water to see if I couldn't uh, calm myself down a little bit. Okay, so uh, that was the Lotus Lake tea we were talking about. I'll let you know next time what I'm going to do to sort this out or where I'm at. I may try it on. It may be the perfect length, but I have to include a certain number of inches for the lace. So shove that back into my bag. Next thing I had on my needles last time I was talking to you in my beautiful bag I got from Fiddlehead Fiber Festival is the shift, shift cowl. I know it's just the shift on Ravelry, but I call it the shift cowl because there's a lot of shift, shifty, shifted, whatever patterns. So this is using two colors um, from Yarn Indulgence. This is um, her Merino Cashmere Silk, one of the gradient colors, and um, a sock marl. I believe we chose Pamela. I probably don't have the tags. No, I don't. So we were trying to recreate... Um, that color changing vibe that the shift cowl has at a much lower price point. So it's fingering weight. Um, the pattern calls for sport. I'm just using fingering. Um, I did go down a needle size. I believe these are 3.5. My contact lenses, I can't really see close up properly. It's linked to my project page below. I'm pretty sure 
3.5. I think the pattern calls for 375 and I think I've gone 3.5. So this is where I'm at. I had talked to you last time that this might have was causing me a little bit of hand wrist pain. So I've been taking my time. Um, I'll do a few rows every couple of days or so. So I'm just using two colors and switching them from the background to the foreground. The pattern calls for three colors. So I'm just kind of going back and forth, back and forth. So this, and I have started the decreases. So my rows are now getting shorter. So after I finish this segment, I'm going to switch and make the um, marl the, the slip stitch color and the solid or the tonal color, the background color again. And I just think it's giving a really fun effect. So that is still on my needles and ongoing. I've got my little uh, stitch stoppers on the end. Keep those stitches on the needles. So I said, that's just cooking in the background. There's no big rush for that. Um, Deborah doesn't have a show now for a little while. Uh, later in the summer, I think August is her next show. So I'll be uh, having it ready for her for that. And then I had two reckless sock cast-ons because I didn't have any socks on the needles. Who am I? Um, I always need to have socks on the needles. I had finished the Swiss Dot Shorties. I had finished the Mind the Gap socks that had been on the needles way too long. So um, it's time for me to start thinking gift knitting. Um, I do have tubes up there <laughs> that uh, my friend, friend Leanne cranked for me. But for close family members who like my socks, I do like to knit them my patterns or something that I've hand knit. Um, it feels a little cheaty. But anyway, it's just, it's a me thing. So I have had this yarn in my stash hmm, two years. I picked this up at a local yarn store in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. It's this fun black. I originally picked it up for uh, my son, a manly sock. It is brighter colors, but I thought and that's what it looks like knit up. So I actually changed my mind once I cast it on. Um, my daughter, my my son's partner um, has a, is a 72 stitch sock. I cast this on for him and then realized I already have a pair of socks for my son for Christmas, but I needed somebody that needed a 72 stitch and she also needs a 72 stitch sock. So it worked out perfectly. Um, so I'm just doing, I don't know if you can see, it's a little bit of a texture. I've done some broken rib kind of grid. So this is the broken rib square. This is some stockinette, a broken rib square. It's kind of hard to see on camera. It just, it's a little bit of texture to keep me from losing the will to live <laughs> while I'm knitting this. Cause I don't want to just do it in vanilla. As we know, my vanilla socks. Uh, take me a while. So I got a cute little baby Yoda. I know he's Grogu, but he'll always be baby Yoda to me. That was made by my friend, Rachel. I'm missing up my uh, science fiction fandoms here. This is in a um, Star Trek and <laughs> the next generation sock bag. Um, make it so number one, John, John Luke Picard. Um, so this was going to be for my son. Um, so I put it in this Star Trek bag. Um, this was made area 51 who does self-striping yarn used to do bags. Um, and I loved her, you know, they're not heavily interfaced or lined. They're just a great squishy, throw a project in and shove it in a bag and go. So I have a few of her bags, but so I'm Star Trek in the bag and a little, uh, Mandalorian Star Wars on my progress keeper, but he's just so darn cute, but he's backwards. Anyway, so I put this, I cast this sock on on Saturday, I think. What are we today? What did I say, Monday? So I have done the leg. I just grabbed some Knit Picks Stroll out of my stash. Do I have it? Yes, I do. It's Paisley Heather. That's about, that's about right but it's the stroll, knit pick stroll fingering Paisley Heather colorway. And I just thought it picked up that kind of mauvey pink in the pattern quite nicely. So I just did a heel flap and gusset and I'm working on the gusset now. Um, 
she has a very short feet, a round white feet, but very short feet. So these will be quick now that I've turned the heel and I'm working my way down the gusset. So this is sock number one and it'll be a Christmas knit. So that is just kind of plunking away in the background. Put it back in there. And um, the last whip I'm gonna show you is another new one. And I'm housing this one in my Creative Knitter uh, project bag that I picked up from Stephanie last December. It was part of the Let's Stay Home collection. I didn't ha I'd never had one of Stephanie's bags before and it's fantastic. It's the perfect little sock bag and all the comfy, cozy, comfy, cozy things. So this is going to be a tale of woe, I do believe. Um, this is um, a sock for another family member. I'm not going to say because I know they watch the podcast using the leftover sweet skein of mine sock blank in these beautiful turquoise and acid greens and it's a nameless but it's just a single knit sock blank 7525 um you all know i love a sock blank so i had 38 grams left in it which meant i needed i had 19 grams for each sock but i can't wind well i could have i suppose i can't when you're knitting from a single sock blank, you're just peeling the yarn off the sock blank. So you can't really kind of divide it in half. I, so I've been weighing as I've been going and I should have done toe up, but I struggle with toe up heels. And I, I could have done my wintry woods uh, heel flap and gusset, which would have worked, but it uses up a lot of yarn. So um, I cast on this sock. I've got grabbed some um, contrast opal I think um, that was in my stash just to kind of make this go a little further did a band in the middle a couple more rounds of rib and cast on uh, smoke gets in your eyes which was one of my sock patterns from last year did a contrast heel flap heel turn I did the dutch or square heel turn because it makes a shorter gusset. You can see the gusset ends here. If I had done a round heel turn, you pick up a lot more stitches and it makes it, you know, the gusset would have been much deeper and it would have used more yarn. So the round heel that I use in my patterns and that I prefer because it fits me better is the round heel turn because it gives me more stitches on my gusset, which makes it wider, which is what I need. Um, this is a 56 stitch sock for somebody with very small legs and ankles. And I knew I could get away with the square heel turn. So I don't know if you can see, instead of being, you know, when you do the, the French or the round heel turn, it really kind of angles, it's round, it's quite curved, where this is a very straight line. And what I use, um, I'll put it down below actually, it's um, a heel turn calculator that you can put in the number of stitches that you have on the back of your sock and it'll tell you, it'll give you a classic or a round or a French or a square. It gives you a choice of about six different heel turns, I do believe, five or six, and the numbers that you need. So it's like a little calculator you can plug in. So I'll put the link for that below because it's really helpful if you ever want to try something different in your heel turns. However, I have gotten, you know, what are we? Two and a half inches down from the, the heel two inches and I've only got a gram and a half left. I did this leg way too long. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I wasn't, it was a Saturday night. I was enjoying some wine and we were watching a movie and I was just enjoying the process and I just knit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rip this out and then I'm going to wind off all of this yarn into a ball. I'm going to weigh it and then I'm going to wind it off into two balls. I'm going to cast on, toe up, probably singly. I might do two at a time. We'll see. But I'll cast on, toe up, and then the leg will be as long as the leg is. But this is too soon. I was thinking, well, if I was a little closer to the toe, I would just start striking in some of this turquoisey opal. But I'm nowhere near the toe. And I think it would just look, I wouldn't be happy with it. I'm sure the, the recipient wouldn't mind, but it would bother the heck out of me. So 
I enjoyed it. I don't regret the time. It was quite quick. It's only a 56 stitch sock, this one. So after doing the 72, this one felt like it was zooming. Um, yeah. So this is going to get ripped out and I will start again pretty right away. I'm going to divide the yarn up, like I said, and then I will be working on these to add to the Christmas gift pile. Must be time for a sip because I'm looking at the screen, which to be fair, I was showing you knitting and I have to look at the screen for that. All right, so I'm just looking at my notes here quickly. Um, knit alongs, we talked about um, a few of them that I'm taking part in. The other one I wanted to mention that I haven't yet is um, the lovely um, ladies from Wool and Wishes podcast. They are doing a hands and feet knit along for the summer. So think socks, slippers, mittens, fingerless mitts, wristers, whatever you would put on your hands or your feet that you can knit. I think it's crochet as well. I would assume it's crochet as well. Pretty inclusive. Um, use the hashtag. I'll put it on the screen here. And if you don't follow the lovely Will and Wishes ladies, um, please do. They are a lot of fun to watch. They are sisters in law. And so there's two of them. So you get lots of knitting content. Okay. Da, 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 da. That's it for all the hashtags for the knit alongs I'm taking part in. Next thing I'm going to show you really quickly is a uh, hand spun. I had shown you this fiber last time I was here. It was a new um, acquisition from Knit City Montreal from the Fiber Imp. And this was a Corydale nylon blend that I want to use for socks. So I split it um, lengthwise into three and then made these little bundles and I'm knitting, knitting, spinning three bobbins on my Nano, my little Nano eel wheel to three ply for a sock. So this is, I said it's Corydale and nylon, but it looks like it's got some Stellina or you know, sparkliness to it, but that's just the nylon, but it's giving it a fun heathered kind of iridescence, which I kind of like. So that I've done one bobbin, I've started my second bobbin and I will probably, I will see where I'm at in three weeks. Tour de Fleece is coming up um, in July. Um, I don't have any firm plans yet, but Tour de Fleece um, takes place during the Tour de France, bicycle race that happens in Europe every summer and I want to um, spin every day so I tend to do a lot of spinning in July so I would guess this should be finished by the time next time I see you because it'll be mid-July so I don't have any firm goals I don't really sometimes I'll I don't really do the team thing I kind of do my own thing but it's just personal goals I'd like to spin every day more than usual I tend to like spinning um, just before bed, like the last hour before bed, because I find it really relaxing and really meditative. And if I start too early, I just spin all night because I can't stop. So it's good for me to have a finite ending. My husband will look at me and go, it's time for bed. <laughs> it makes me turn off my wheel and put my fiber away and go to bed. As I said, if I start in the evening, just after supper, I will spin all night, which is great, which is fine but then I don't get the knitting hours in that I like to get. It's all crafting. It's all, it's all good. Hand spun. All right. Let us do some design chat quickly. I'm not going to, you know, go too long for this, but I'll put it, I said, I'm going to put a timestamp in or use the chapters function for this. So the first thing I guess I should explain is why did I knit three? <laughs> so my first sample is this one. And I'm, I don't know if we'll be able to see it on the camera. I'm just going to get real close. Yes, you can. So I tried a couple different techniques for this dot stitch. And can you see right here, right underneath my finger, it's quite a big stitch. So it happened all the way in front of every single one of these dots or after, I guess, because you're working it cuff down. I was getting these elongated or extra big stitches and I didn't like it. So I changed my technique 
um, with the way that I was wrapping the yarn to get a cleaner, a cleaner, see, you can't see, there's no elongated or extra large stitches there. It looks more normal. But I'd already knit most of this sock when I realized I was having an issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the reject sock, it's fine, there's nothing wrong with it, and one of the other ones, this will make a pair for my daughter. And then I'll keep one of the good ones to use as my sample or for pictures or for whatever. I've taken all the pictures for the pattern already. This is the Swiss Dot Shorties sock that will be out on the first day of summer. I thought that was appropriate. Wednesday, June 21st. It's so much fun. It's a seven round repeat and it just zooms by. It's lots of plain knitting rounds, which you know is my, my, my vibe, but with these fun little details that makes it just go so quickly. You could knit this as a full length sock. You could take one more, you know, line out and make it a more of an ankle so you know you can the world is your oyster with this and to be fair any sock pattern that you like can easily be made a shorty just make the leg shorter um find your favorite length for wearing in your summer sneakers or just as little slippers in the summer um my husband likes the air conditioning a lot colder than i do usually Mm, menopausal me might be a little different this year, but I usually always have to have something on my feet, slippers or small, thinner socks. <clears throat> so this kind of thing works really well in the summer for me. Anyway, let's just, oh, there we go. I just need to blow it out and get it to. So um, that's why I've knit three socks. I have a reject that my daughter will get and she won't even know the difference. <laughs> and two, good ones that I've used for the pictures. So this will be coming out. I will be doing um, my usual first, anything that isn't a collaboration or a direct for a yarn show. I do the first seven days are a donation to a charity. And I was trying to decide what I wanted to do um, for this. I didn't really have any great inspiration. And then as I was writing up the notes for the pattern and my little um, blurb on the pattern cover page, I was talking, I was thinking about Swiss dot fabric for me. I had a ballet dress my mom had made for me out of Swiss dot fabric. I remember being this super awkward kid playing with those textured dots. I would, I would fidget with the dots on the skirt of this little ballet dress um, when I was uncomfortable because I was quite shy. I'm still quite shy. I know, I know but I, I'm awkward, socially awkward. I struggle, you know, and I was very shy as a kid. So I was playing with those little dots as a kid. So it was bringing me back a lot of childhood memories and, you know, light and breezy, airy fabric in summer and being a kid. And in Moncton, we have a great charity called Moncton Head Start. It is a local group, a registered charity that looks to help struggling parents raise their kids. So there's help, there's direct help for the kids, there's classes and daycare options, but there's also classes and education options for the parents to help them raise their kids and be successful parents. And isn't that what we all want to be? So those memories of childhood led me to Moncton Head Start. So they are going to be my charity of choice for this pattern. I will put a link to them down below and I'll have more information on Moncton Head Start on my Instagram post when I start flashing you all the Swiss dot shorties over the next week. You're going to be sick to death of seeing me and these socks over the next week. Um, as always, um, if you don't need a sock pattern, I completely understand. Um, but if you would share my posts or tell your friends about it, I would greatly appreciate it. And um, let's knit some shorty socks this summer. They're a great way to use up scraps. I think my pair was 36 grams of the main color for two socks. So I used 36 grams of the main color and 11 grams of the contrast color. So blowing out, there we go. So you can use scraps. If you've got a 10 gram mini on a smaller size, you can probably get away with it. 15 grams would give you a bit more space. But if you're a 56 stitch sock knitter, I think you'd be able to do it in a 10 gram for your contrast. And you'd be looking around 25 grams for the main color. 
So grab your minis, grab your leftover self-striping yarn, um, and give the little Swiss dot shorty pattern a try. So that's it for design chat. I've got something new I'm getting, I'm thinking about, I've got a pattern kind of on the, on the back burner in my brain. I haven't cast it on yet. I just needed to knit some non-design socks for a little while, but I'm working on that. Looking at the screen, not the camera, time for a sip. Let us do the winners from the giveaway from the last episode. Um, and then we'll do acquisitions and go into chat. So if you're not interested in sticking around for those last two sections, you can, we can say goodbye, but let's get this giveaway done. So I had done some shopping for you guys at Knit City Montreal and made a kit for you for the, uh, parade of cones socks and the blooming lovely socks. So it's, these two patterns. So this is Parade of Cones in that amazingly fun marl sock and the Blooming Lovely. And I'd forgotten to mention last time, I did put it on the screen. I'm going to include um, Ravelry copies of this pattern as well for you guys, whoever wins, whoever wins. But I know who's won. Oh, fluff on my lips. I know who's won these because I did the draw before I remembered I was clever today. So this parade bundle with the bag, the yarn, some um, a pin and a tea bag and a little progress keeper for me. That is going to Dorothy. I'll put uh, your YouTube information on the screen here. And then the winner of the blooming bag, yarn, tea bag, progress keeper is Janice. So I put that screenshot on there as well. So congratulations to the winners. If you would please contact me um, through the email address I'm gonna put on the screen here, but it'll also be linked below. If you can contact me to that email address. And if I haven't heard from you ladies by the next time I record, so that'll be the middle of July, um, if I haven't heard from you in three weeks, I will redraw it. I may try to read, if I can find your comments, I will try to reach out that way. Even though I said I wasn't going, no, I'm not going to do that because of the spam issues. Um, we had over 420 comments um, in the chat. Um, most were entering for the draw. Some were just uh, chit chat. Um, I answered every single one of them and I appreciate every single one of them. Um, there were some very inventive ways to incorporate both blooming and parade into your comments. And that made, that brought me great joy over the last few weeks. If you just made another comment and put the words in, that was absolutely fine as well. I'm terrible at that. I, I like to enter giveaways on podcasts as well. And, you know, it'll be use this in a sentence and my brain goes bleh and I got nothing. So, I didn't care if it was inventive, it wasn't picked by that, but it was very entertaining for those of you who did pick fun ways to use blooming and parade in the sentences. And then I had to make sure I didn't use them in my reply because I didn't want to skew the uh, comment picker. So that is that. Um, congratulations to the winners. Contact me below, as I said, ladies, and I will get those out. Um, somebody had mentioned in the comments that they didn't expect me to send it to New Zealand. I didn't mention, I will send these anywhere. I will send all of my prizes anywhere. They will be vacuum sealed and sent letter mail. I will not track, but they are open to anywhere around the world. Um, I'm quite happy to do that. Uh, I do have ads turned on for my YouTube for monetization. And I use that little bit that I get every month to use for postage or buying prizes for you guys. So um, it's not coming out of my pocket. It's coming out of the money that I'm making from you guys watching the ads at the beginning and or the end of the YouTube videos. I will never put them in the middle. It's one of my bugbears, pet peeves. I don't like mid, mid, mid podcast ads. Um, so if that does happen to you, let me know. But I have it set up only to be at the beginning and at the end. But as I said, that little bit of money that I make allows me to uh, do postage for you guys. Yay, it's a win-win. All right, 
chatter. Oh no, acquisitions. <laughs> um, it was uh, Worldwide Knit and Public Day two weekends ago, two weekends ago, a week and a half ago. Um, as I said at the beginning in the weather portion of the podcast, it has been raining a lot and it poured. The Saturday that was supposed to be Worldwide Knit and Public Day, it rained. So Manon from La Violette, Yarn Gift and Co. moved our Worldwide Knit and Public Day till Sunday. I think I took some pictures. I'll put them here if I have. Um, the sun shone and it was beautiful. Um, and I went into the shop before because of course I did. Uh, Manon had a sale on and I needed to pick up some yarn, some plant-based yarn. I look at my stash and I have lots of sweater quantities, but I have very little, I have no more plant-based yarn in my stash. Uh, this, that green linen, linen lace weight that I'm knitting, the Lotus Lake tea is, was my last plant-based. So I have the knitting for olive plant-based and I have the, uh, oh, there's no screen on this window and I have a bug. Hmm. I think it's a mosquito. Excellent. Hang on one second. I'm just going to put you on hold and try and kill it. Okay. So I just chased a mosquito around and was unable to catch it. So I'm sure it will come back and bite me later as they do. Oh, right. Acquisitions. Um, plant-based. So excuses, excuses. I bought more yarn. It was on sale and I don't have any plant-based yarn in my stash and I wanted some DK. So I have a bag full and I'm knocking stuff on the floor. Hang on one second. Oh dear. Okay. So I picked up, I enjoyed working with the Tin Lina. So I picked up the DK version. Um, in this kind of charcoaly granite. It's a little darker than that. Yeah, it's like that. I think I can do this. I'm still struggling with, with my new, new, I've had this hair color since 2018, 2019, I guess I finally went completely uncolored. Um, yeah, so this is going to be a tanker tee with a better fitting sleeve. I like the other one, but it's more kind of a kind of a ruffly dolmeny kind of vibe. I want the better fitting. So I picked up nine skeins of this Tin Lina. Um, Manon only had six in one color lot, dye lot, and three, I had to pick up three in a different dye lot. They're not hugely different, but I've just used a highlighter yellow and marked the three that are the different dye lot. And I will use that for the ribbing and uh, at, the, at the neck and the sleeves and the body because, or even the garter stitch at the top, the tanker tee, I'll put another picture, the, the yoke, um, the drop stitch, drop stitch, drop shoulder area until you split for the sleeves is garter. So um, I thought I could use this in the garter and nobody would ever know, but I've got nine skeins of this. So this will be going on my needles after I finish the other two. Um, and then I also picked up three skeins of this um, Cascade Yarns Refine. I've been looking at this and looking at this because it's totally my comfort zone in color. Um, Sophie from Cozy Meadow Knits has knit a garment in this. I have fluff. I have fluff flying. So this refine is um, quite a fine fingering. It's 100 grams, 503 yards. Come on. There we go. So it is a superwash merino nylon blend. 100% recycled. So I picked up three of these. Um, I'm thinking maybe some hand spun in a yoke for this. It seems to be everything I'm buying these days in, in woolly yarn is, oh, I could do, I get three skeins and I can use my hand spun in a yoke. Apparently I have a lot of color work plans. So three skeins of this, um, as I said, I took advantage of Menon's um, lovely sale for the uh, Worldwide Knit and Public Day. And um, then the other, the only other acquisition was that beautiful floral bag that my uh, Cloudsley is living in. And at this point I have 
no plans to buy. Oh, I'm lying. I have a needle order coming from Acme Fibers in Ontario. <laughs> um, I was looking for a new nine inch circular. One of my 2.25 millimeters has gone walkabout and I only have Chow Gu nine inch circulars and they were carrying the high highest. So I thought I would try one. So um, I've got an order from Acme Fibers coming with some nine inch circulars or a nine inch circular. I can't remember, but that's it. I swear. Okay. I'm just going to wrap this up with a little bit of chat, things that have kind of popped onto my radar. Um, on Selma, Little Big Knits podcast, um, she had mentioned whenever I talk about sweater math, where I got most of those skills from is from Selma, Little Big Knits. She referenced in her last podcast, she looked back and found out where she talked about the sweater math specifically. It is episode 12. So Little Big Knits episode 12, if you're looking to um, change your gauge and then have to figure out your sizing, that episode is very useful. Lots of great information. And that's where I learned most of what I know about changing my sizing to meet my gauge. I'm sure most of you are already watching Selma, but episode 12 is a good one to rewatch if you have any questions about modifying your garments for gauge. Um, the other thing that jumped into my thought process was... Um, Kim and Colin from Ginger Snap. They announced that Blooming, the yarn that I used on my Blooming Lovely Socks, is now available on their website. So if you didn't win this yarn and were, were really looking to try it, then it is now in their web shop. If for whatever reason you're watching this in the future and it isn't, it's always worthwhile reaching out to them because they're pretty good at... Um, either doing custom dye or letting you know when it will be available. So I would always recommend any hand dyer. If you see a color of theirs that you like that isn't available anymore, sorry, mosquito just flew. <laughs> Did you see it? <laughs> um, reach out to them because most hand dyers will be able to replicate that for you, unless it's a one of a, one of a kind. Um, the last thing I have on my list, I had quite a few fun comments about um, the T-Bird, the 1960 T-Bird that I showed in my last episode and some of the little extra footage. I don't think I have any extra footage for you today. Um, as I said, it's been a really busy three weeks. Um, but I just wanted to kind of give talk to you a little bit about that car. So that's a 1960 Ford Thunderbird that was my father's dream car. Um, so in 1983, I believe he bought two <laughs> Ford Thunderbirds out of California. One was a hard top, one was a soft top, and he used the hard top as a donor car. They stripped parts out of that car to make one good car, which was the convertible. Um, he fell out of love with that car back in the mm, early 2000s and was going to sell it. And uh, my husband and I said, no, we use that car um, at our wedding. Mm, I may or may not put a picture up here. I probably won't, but I might. A very young Nancy and Brad at their wedding in the Thunderbird. Um, so we took on the car. My husband has refurbished it um, once fully and a second time, just a little bit of extra work. He's always tinkering, but it is, um, we go out in that car quite a lot in the summer. We'll grab a picnic and go find somewhere. We go to car shows and hang out and um, I sit and knit and he gets to walk around and chat with all the car guys. Um, yeah, so that's a fun summer thing that we do, but that uh, car is a family heirloom and it will stay in our family. Uh, we have two children and uh, only one Thunderbird, so they'll have to figure that out later on. But um, yes, thank you for all of your comments on the last episode. Um, I love to have a chat with you guys. So if you have any comments or thoughts, um, please feel free to leave them below. As I mentioned earlier, if you find the chapters useful, let me know that as well, because I'm not sure if I'll keep doing it, I'll do it for another couple episodes and see if the feed, what the feedback is like on it. Um, I don't know how many people use it. I tend not to. I usually just put a podcast on and let it go um, while I'm doing, while I'm knitting or doing other things around the house. All right, my friends. Um, I think that is everything. 
and I have a couple of slurps of wine left, so it's pretty good timing, I think. I'm heading off to knit night shortly. I have no idea what time it is. <laughs> I'll be heading off to knit night um, this evening and hopefully having some fun chat and knitting with some friends. And some great pizza. That brewery has some nice uh, locally made craft pizza that they bake up and it's delicious. Uh, I'm just scanning my notes again to make sure I haven't forgotten the things I usually do. Um, no, I think that's everything. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Happy knitting, my friends. Happy sipping. And I will see you in about three weeks. Cheers. <laughs>